Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new moment for all of us, and that's why I'm not gonna. I feel like I'm picking on him. We're, we're saying, you know, well done, two wins into the breaking zone, and that's a tidy move. How am I? Jano Otmir. Maybe you've heard of him. If not, he's recently exploded on YouTube taking the F1 scene by storm. Two times esports champion, proficient race driver in real life, Twitch sensation and YouTube content creator are just some of the accolades he's already acquired in his early career. So how did Jano Otmir rise to the top of F1 YouTube getting similar views to giants such as Tiamat Marduk and also Arava? As of right now, Jano has reached over 351,000 subscribers on the YouTube platform while also acquiring on average 1,000 subscribers per day. These are outstanding numbers considering how early on he is starting with YouTube. So how did he gain this much exposure in a short amount of time? Well a lot of the value he brings comes from his driving ability and we have to go back to his early days of karting to be able to uncover how he built upon his skill on the track. Entering competitive karting competitions at the age of 9, Yano would race against big name drivers in his karting career such as Mick Schumacher which he actually crashed into at one point, but saw early success taking first position in the 2009 and 2010 Dutch Championship Mini Juniors series. Yano would then progress his karting career by also entering Belgium, Dutch, German and international championships where the competition was more fierce. While given the opportunity to race against higher skilled drivers, Yano built up his own driving ability to hopefully one day graduate from kartings in pursuit of bigger dreams. While the competition was more fierce in bigger championships, Yano saw a mixed bag of results in his later years of karting with an 11th place in the German Senior Karting Championship in 2015 before graduating to single seaters realizing the next step in his driving career. He kept up with his international travel by competing in the F4 Spanish Championship and the SMP F4 Championship which is the north zone of Europe, competing in places such as Sochi Autodrome and Moscow in Russia as well as Zandvoort, Sweden and Finland. Continuing his single-seater journey he got to race at international circuits that are considered some of the best in the world such as Monza, Spa, Monaco, Silverstone, just to name a few. If there was anyone to compare the F1 game to the real life tracks, Yano would be the person to do it. However, competing in karting and single seater championships is not cheap, and also results can be dependent on your team's performance with the car set up. However, Yano seemed to have a very successful 2016 campaign with 7 wins out of 21 races along with 4 poles. 2017 and 2018 weren't as successful but to remind you of the competition Yano was up against, he was racing against Robert Schwartzman, Max Futrell and Dan Tickton, just to name a few. During this time, Yano Otmir was taking part in other forms of racing such as simulator racing in the form of league racing. His first live stream to the YouTube channel took place in 2017 playing the F1 2016 game in a league race around Mexico. It remains unclear whether there was more uploads that have been unlisted since they've took place but this was the earliest available on his YouTube channel as of today. The benefits of taking part in simulator racing is substantial as you are able to hone your skills without paying the cost of running a car in the real world as well as the traveling costs that are associated with it. While this was going to be the start of Yano Otmir's league racing career, his success was only going to grow more and more as he participated in more competitive racing leagues across Europe such as Apex Online Racing in the 2018 F1 game. Notably, this was one of the first races I witnessed Jano Otmir participate in and he dominated interchangeable conditions at Kota. This was going to be a recurring theme as you'll see later on in his esports career. The most recent example being the F1 22 PSGL event around Kota where he took the race win in very similar interchangeable conditions. Interestingly, Apex Online Racing was run by coordinator Dan Hawkins who then later on went to host the 2017 inaugural F1 esports event where Brendan Lee would take the first championship win. Yano Otmir first joined F1 esports as a part of the 2019 Renault Vitality team and this was his first opportunity to be able to showcase his talent on the world stage securing a very solid fourth place for his first entry into the esports series. However everything was about to change in the 2020 season of esports where he would race for Alfa Romeo where a desynchronization glitch would see Yano crash into David Tinitza, the reigning world champion. This was neither of the drivers fault and a game instability but had championship ramifications.
Legends. Nonetheless, Yano went on then to progress and become F1 Esports champion in the 2020 season, securing 196 points against his closest competitor, Frederick Rasmussen. However, 2020 did not see any growth for Yano or Miz's YouTube channel. Things were about to heat up in 2021 as Yano signs a contract with Mercedes and starts to become a recognized name within the F1 community and content creators. F1 Esports was becoming more serious as Formula 1 teams joined in on the action, and signing with Mercedes definitely had its perks. Continuing his success from last year, Yano went on to then win another championship, being the second ever to win two championships in a row following Brendan Lee. Yano Otmir was a well-known name at this point, even if you did not know he had a YouTube channel, and this proved to be the perfect opportunity and platform to launch his YouTube growth into the stratosphere. The 2021 Esports Championship was a lot harder contested this year in comparison to the 2020 season, with fierce competition from Frederick Rasmussen and new rival Lucas Blakely. When competing at an esports level in racing, you are racing against people with no disadvantage, so to become the best of the best in esports, you have to beat them on pure driver ability, which is not always the case in real life circumstances, where the team, money, and driver weight can make a big difference to your success. A standout performance for Yano was coming from the back of the grid to win the race on a gamble using the intermediate tires instead of the wet tires. But let's talk about Yano's YouTube growth, because this is where it all kicked off. In 2021, Yano saw immense YouTube and social media growth across all his platforms. As you can see, in January of 2021, he began uploading relevant content based on his esports experience and had the credentials, reputation, and driving ability to back it up. Yana Omir now has over 203,000 followers on Twitch and show the same correlation of growth that was seen on his YouTube channel as well. There is a very good reason for the correlation between the Twitch and YouTube success, and if you put them together, you can see they almost rise at the exact same peaks as each other. So how did he do this? Well, collaborations was one of the key points in the growth of Yano's channels. He joined Veloce, which also enabled him to have a team supporting him while creating content. He would then go on to collaborate with other personalities such as Mason Mount the English footballer, F2 drivers, Harry and Zerka from the Sidemen, and Lando Norris to name a few. These collaborations with larger YouTubers than himself, as well as his driving reputation after winning two F1 Esports Championships, led to the rapid growth in comparison to other YouTubers such as Timo Marduk and Arava, and in future projections is set to catch and pass Timo Marduk and Arava in views and subscribers as well. So how did he do it? How did Yano Otmir achieve this level of success in this short amount of time? Well, he used a very very smart method of creating his live streamed content on Twitch and then delivering that on YouTube in a shorter form of clips. Now, there is a 24 hour exclusivity rule that prevents the upload of streams from Twitch to YouTube, but rather than seeing this as a disadvantage, Yano and his team uses this 24 hour time to edit and commentate over the footage from his Twitch stream to then upload to YouTube. On top of both building his YouTube and Twitch channel views this way, he would then post more clips to Yano Yano Otmir clips his second channel to achieve three times the exposure using the same recycled content once again and achieve more revenue that way. On top of this, he would repost short form clips that you would see on the Clips channel to his TikTok, which has now over 195,000 followers. To top this all off, he's also grown his Twitter and Instagram account, which also has over 116,000 followers at this point in time, which gives his audience a more personal insight to his life lifestyle outside of YouTube and Twitch. His collaborations with other YouTubers such as Harry from the Sidemen have also blown up to make him viral and showcases Yano's genuine personality and sense of humor in the spotlight of social media. Since exploding on YouTube, Yano has remained humble and also responds well to criticism and haters which only drives him to more success. Yano Otmir's formula to success can be seen that as the opposite of Super GT and Jimmy Broadbent as Super GT and Jimmy Broadbent have brought their sim racing experience to the real world, whereas Yano Otmir has taken his real world experience into sim racing and has been very successful, building his reputation with two esports titles, and the summarization of his YouTube popularity can be broken down into seven main points. He's the best F1 game driver in the world, why would you want to watch anyone else? It's as simple as that. He has the best content, seeing as he's the best current driver on the game, where other creators can't provide that same 
and reputation. His collaborations with other large YouTubers such as the Sidemen and the Veloce squad has seen him explode to the forefront of everyone's subscription feed even if you didn't know about Yana Otmir previously. His competition success in the F1 esports category has only added to his publicity through the F1 main channel and F1 teams for which he has raced for. The combination of linking all his social media accounts has only reinforced his content to be shared across all platforms. The smart recycling of used content allows him to achieve at least 16 times the detail for what would be only one Twitch stream. And by breaking down the content into smaller, shorter forms of videos, he is able to engage and entertain a larger audience. The final two dot points are related to his personality as he is being genuine and a lot of viewers can tell whether you are being genuine or faking it. So he's remained the same personality as he once was before he achieved all this popularity and his sense of humor is also only improving as he is rebounding his ideas off of his growing following. With his current method of creating content, there is no reason why Yano can't continue to grow and even surpass larger YouTubers within the F1 community than himself at the current point in time. So I do not see his success drying up anytime soon and his driving ability seems to not be impacted so far by his obligation to create content for his viewers. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content and let me know in the comments section if you'd like more videos like this. Otherwise, you should go check out some of my other videos if you would like a laugh on my channel. I guarantee that you'll giggle at least a little bit and I'll see you all in a brand new video.